derivative of the step function? <coughs> take a look at this now because I don't want you to think of these integrals and derivatives we're looking at in these examples as simple arbitrary mathematical constructs that actually have real meaning and we need to understand and interpret what we're doing. So we're going to see ramp functions, we're going to see step functions, spikes like this all have physical meaning. It's not just a mathematical idea. Here's another one for you to warm up with before we get going again. The derivative with respect to time of e to minus t over p. midterm question that you're going to apply this. This is not something that should be taking a whole lot of time. A minute or two. So first one. And we 
had left the class last time where we had said if we derived the differential equation for that system based on the mass balance, we would have the mass balance, we got the equation of the form dh by t is equal to 1 over a fn minus f i. And our goal was to find h as a function of time and see what that is analytically. So anyone managed to get that function on the right hand side, h as a function of time? Um, I got fn times r plus e to the minus t over ra times okay. c. Plus c, okay. Or times c, right? Times c. Yeah. Okay, so then if we sub in our values we got last time, you'd be able to plot that analytically over time. Were we given an initial height? Yeah, we were, yeah, we were given an initial height. What was that, three or four? Four meters, I think. Okay, I didn't remember what that. Yeah, it was four meters, but if you were given all that information, you'd drop it for C and then it's great yeah. the time. Okay, so let's take a look at how, how Patrick got that answer. Um, before we go ahead, one thing that's important to do is calculate your number of knowns and unknowns. So right now we have how many equations? Okay, this is not a trick question. I do need you to interact with me even though it's 8.30. How many equations? One, two, one. So you said just the two, which other was the second one? Your initial condition. The initial condition. Is the initial condition qualify? Mm -hmm. Well, just if for, I remember for three E, it was counted as one of the same Okay. Okay, so three E, if you were looking at it from solving a system of equations, you would need an initial condition as one of the equations. Okay? If we're looking at this purely from an ODE point of view and integrating it by analytically, we have one equation. How many unknowns do we have? We have H. We have A, F in, F out. Okay, so four unknowns, one equation. Okay, so the system is underdetermined or overdetermined? Under. Okay, so four unknowns and one equation. So what do we need? Specify. You need to specify three things or give three equations. Okay, either one works. And I often prefer to see it as, as specifying equations rather than specifying unknowns. So what I like to do sometimes is just assume that there are four variables. The four variables in the system: H, A, F in, F out, and one equation. So let's up our number of equations. Three more equations, what, what might they be? Well, we said last time Fn is equal to 0.8 meters cubed per minute. That's an equation. Okay, so we're saying Fn is equal to 0.8. So now we are at two equations. A we said last time was 0.5 meters squared. So that was the cross-sectional area of my tank. We had a bit of a discussion about that last time. Now up to three equations. Last time we also said F out is equal to H of R. So what's happened over there now? So now we're up to five variables. One, two, three, four equations. So we need one final thing. One more equation. Okay? We said R is equal to 15 centimeters <coughs> over meters squared. Okay, so five variables, five equations now. So we're good to go. Trivial system, you do this in your head without thinking on this sort of problem. But on bigger problems, you're going to face that sort of way of going about it. Write down your equations and count up your variables. So now we're up to five variables. 
equation, you've got five equations that specify or relate to it. Then you're ready to solve the system. Okay, so if we look at that system, let's solve it analytically without summing in numbers. Right, we often get most value by doing that. So we're at this point now where we're trying to solve this equation. Let's write it up over here. And then I'll give you a chance to go ahead and do this. So if we write up that equation over there, we can say dh by the t. So I'm going to bring the f out term over to the right hand side. You're going to see why. So I can write plus f out over a on the right on the left hand side. So plus f out over a is equal to f in over a. f out, however, is h over r. So let's sub that in right over here. So h over r a. So let's recall quick what the integrating factor is. I'll write it up over here on this side of the board. And you can go ahead and try and use it. So the integrating factor technique review from your math notes is also in Appendix B of Dr. Marlin's book. The integrating factor says that if you have an ODE of the form dy by dt plus some function of time f multiplied by y of t, and that's equal to another function g of t. If you have no d in that in that term, in that setup like that, your integrating factor i f is equal to e to the integral of f of t dt. And the solution to that o d e is y as a function of time is e to the minus. So notice the minus over there. The integrating factor does not have a minus, but the solution has e to the minus the integral of f of t dt open brackets. And I'm going to write this in the brackets down here, so I've got the space for it. Okay. That's equal to integral of g of t e to the integral of f of t dt plus a constant. Okay. So this term over here, that's your integrating factor. Many, many systems in chemical engineering are of this type and we have to use this integrating factor to so unfortunately in your math course you learned this probably just as shown over there, you used it a couple of times and you're happy, but you never really understood what's going on there and why it's useful. Well it's useful in chemical engineering. Many of our systems have this sort of ODE structure. Systems of chemical reaction, this tank with the height of it. Many practical systems are of this type. So go ahead and apply what you see over there to our system that we're getting. You should be able to do this in about three, four minutes. Try that theory and give it a go.
It's just I um, couldn't fit it all in on the So I've rewritten it up there on the whiteboard for you. But I didn't have enough space on the black. So this is simply just telling you whatever goes in that box of <coughs> What's f of t? What's capital Y? Okay, so on this, in that setup over there, y is equal to h, f of t, f of t, after questions, one of r a, and p of t, f a of So what's the integrating factor equal to? Okay, can you get a little bit, can you solve for it? So the integrating factor is e to the integral f of t. What's this term equal to over here? Up in the front of the square brackets. <laughs> This g of t is not actually a function of time in this situation. 
Okay, so we're fortunate in this particular example that g of t is actually constant over time. So fn and a are not functions of time. So they can come out of that integral. And then we can pretty much get a solution that way. The only thing we don't know is c yet. Okay. So if we sum in what we, what we just looked at over there, we can write the following. So y of t becomes h of t is equal to e to the minus t of r a, open square brackets, we get f n over a. That's my g of t, I can take that out of the integral. This integral here, the integrating factor we have there already, but we have to integrate the integrating factor this time, okay? So g of t gets taken out. Now we've got the integral of the integrating factor. What's that equal to? So in other words, let's, let's ask here on the side. What we're aiming for over here is the integral of E the integral this morning I asked you what is e to the minus a multiplied by a constant b multiplied by e to the plus raised to the power of some constant a. Well we know that these two terms will cancel out with each other. We'll get a 1 over there. So we're going to end up with h of t equal to fn times r plus this constant c e to the minus t over r. Let me just take it up on this board over here on this side so people that can't see it in the back. And C 
sum in all the, all the values you have, calculate C, and then simplify and get a final relationship between the two. give you a minute to look at that. So what does that function look like? H of t. We know our initial condition is 4. We're calling H of t. is let's try to see if this makes physical sense. So at t equals 0, this exponent is equal to 1. So 12 minus 8 we get when we recover our initial condition of 4. So that, that works. That's good to see. What's the other check we can do? Let's take t up to infinity. to ask you what's the steady state, the new steady state of the system. Take t up to infinity and we get 12. Okay? So we know we're going to end up at 12. Okay, so at some point in the future we're going to land at 12. How do we get there? Straight line. Curve. Curve which way? Okay, curve this way. The stabilizer up to 12. So the new height in the tank will be 12 meters cubed. Uh, 12 meters. Okay, so quite a bit of work for a fairly trivial system. How difficult or different would your work be if I had told you that f out? Instead of being h over r, was instead the square root of h over r. Would you be able to do this? So that's a more realistic system. Most valves and heights and tanks are proportional to the square root rather than a linear system. Okay, so that's, that's a thought I want you to hold because we're going to look at non-linear systems next time. Uh, non-linear integration and how we deal with that. But what I'd like to do quick before um, we leave this example while we still have it in our minds, let's take a look at how we can solve this in the computer.
so after 3E and, and using this sort of idea of integrating equations, I've posted on the course website this template code that you absolutely should use in your assignments and so forth, right? So don't feel that you can't copy this code. This code is here because it guarantees to work for every ODE system, right? It's generic. Um, and it's intentionally created for you guys to use in these sorts of examples. So if we're looking at integrating an ODE system with computer software, and even what we've just done here by hand, let's take a look at this example. So we've got dh by dt with 1 over a times fn minus, let's just sub in our value in h over r. Okay, so that was where we, we started this lecture. Okay. So we've got one equation, and right now we have five variables. Then we added those equations for Fn and A, so we said A is equal to something, Fn is equal to something, R is equal to something else, so we now have four equations. H, A, F, N, and R. Okay, so yeah, so we've got four variables, I should say, and now we have four equations. Now, that's the system, you need to get to that system where you've got as many equations and variables before you even start with the computer software. So don't even bother opening MATLAB until you have this down <coughs> with your phone. Then the next thing before you start to use your computer software is identify what's your independent and your dependent variable. So we said last time, independent variable here is time. So this is my independent variable. And what's my dependent variable in this case? to go yet using MATLAB. One final thing we need to do is find initial conditions for every dependent variable when the independent variable is zero. Okay. So let's write it out here in words. Find initial conditions for every dependent variable. This is important, every dependent variable. It's trivial in this case if we only have one dependent variable. But in future cases, we're going to have two or three. So we need an initial condition for every single one of those dependent variables. Or when our independent variable is equal to zero. So our independent variable in this course is always going to be time. So we need an initial condition for every dependent variable when t is equal to zero. Because t is my independent variable. In reactor design, your independent variable is sometimes changed to um, the mass of catalyst. If you're integrating over a plug flow reactor, those of you that are taking 3K at the moment, you'll see that in a few weeks from now. So your initial condition is slightly different. And in this course, our initial condition is always time, so we need to find that initial condition at time zero. Once you have that information, so number of equations matches your number of variables, you know what your dependent variable is, you know what your independent variable is, and you have your initial conditions, then you open your MATLAB editor. Before that, you're wasting your time and you're just going to be fumbling around. Okay, so let's take a look at how we set that up. This code is posted on the course website. And once you have it open, there's two files that you need to create. Always two files. One is your ODE driver, and the other is your model. So your driver will call your model. If you want a picture in your mind, So 
your driver is the thing that's doing the work for you. Okay, and then you have your model. And what the driver will do is will call the model. The model is another function. It sits in a separate M file. And you send as an input into the model time. That's the first thing that goes in. And the second thing is that goes in is the current value. of the dependent variable. More than one dependent variable. So it will always give it two inputs. And what the model does is it will return as an output back to the driver the value after integrating that model from time t to dt. So the driver will put in time equals zero, time 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, and it's doing the runger cutter integration or any of the other integration methods that you used and learnt about in three. Okay, so you don't have to take care of writing all that code about calculating step sizes that Dr. Adam has taught you. We'll let MATLAB do that for us in this course. Okay, but what you do need is this model so that this driver can do that work for you. Okay, so if this is not making any sense, this is something that you have to go back to your 3D notes. Near the end, you guys learnt about this and using ODE 4.5 and, and some of the other tools. Okay. So, the driver code on the course website requires you to specify the independent start time. So we're going to integrate from time zero. We're going to integrate up to time 50. So there's T zero and T final. You need to set the initial condition or conditions in a, in a vector. So in this case, H is my independent variable. So A at time zero is four. And I put that in a vector. So it's trivial in this case if I've got one dependent variable. That vector is only of length one. But in the future, that vector will, you will have a comma, the next element, comma, the third element. And then you just simply use this code that's shown here and you call the ODE integrator. So ODE45 is the integrator we're going to use most often. We give it the model name. We'll take a look at that M file in a minute. You give it the independent variable start time and end time and the vector of initial conditions. And it will return to you, after this is done, it's going to return two vectors, t and a vector h. And in t, you're going to get a vector 0, 0 0.1, 0 0.5, 0 0.7, 0 0.9, 1.2, 1.7. This is not going to be equally spaced. These are the time steps that the integrator used, and it's going to give you the values of h at those points in time. So 4 will be the first one, and then we'll keep going. Change. So it's going to return two variables to you, two vectors, the independent variable and the dependent variable. Then you can do with it whatever you like. You can plot them, you can do calculations based on okay, So very little work for you to do, but you must understand what's going on in this. Let's take a look at what the model looks like. The model for that tank, that's going to tell me what the tank's volume uh, height is. So the model is going to spit out and in time what is the tank's height. So let's take a look at the model file. Okay, so Standard MATLAB function is a vector that's going to be returned here, and you're going to give it the independent variable, which is time, and the dependent variable. And what it does is, let's take that dependent variable, that second input, we call that h. There's my other equations for a, flow in, r, and flow out. And then I simply write out this function really only has one major line, 
it's going to be that ODE. So if you can't see at the back of the class, it's just uh, right out. What that last line does for you is it's simply returning this ODE over here. So that last line at the back, you can't see, simply says 1 over A times Fn minus F out. And I've actually substituted F out to the HMR. Okay, so you, you don't actually integrate the ODE in this model file, you just give it the raw ODE itself and it will integrate the variable for you. Okay, so that's just a recap really of 3E. What, like if this is not making sense to you the past 10, 15 minutes of discussion, you must come to understanding of it by looking at this code on the course website you can speak to me or speak to the TAs. This is important stuff to understand. So what you run then when you finally got the setup is you run the driver. The driver will pull the model for you. So you don't actually touch the model. You just write that code. And then the driver will do the work for you. So if we go here in MATLAB, we go to the driver. And I'm going to step through this function line by line so you can see what it's doing. So just put a breakpoint over there and debug. Let's start running this file. So we're at that point, and let's step one line by line. So it's going to set my independent variable start time and end time. So it's, I'm going to integrate between 0 and 50 minutes. My initial condition is 4 meters. <coughs> and then when I step over this line, it's going to do all the integration for me. So pretty much there in no time. I've got two variables now. The independent variable, that's time, and the dependent variable, that's height. So time changes from 0 up to 50, the dependent variable starts at 4, the height of the tank initially, and gets integrated up. And then for the next few lines, it's simply just a plot. So it's going to step over those plots, and there's the, a plot of the tank's height over time. Okay, so we see we start at, zero, at 4, but then it takes about 40 minutes before we stabilize up to 12 meters. What's going to happen to that tank height if the resistance R, what if this resistance is a smaller number? How's that curve going to change? So I will leave that up to you to look at and play around with it, either the code or the, or the, or the, or the, or the 